I'm Professor Steven Sakula, and I'm an Associate Professor of Physics at SMU. I'm also the Director of Graduate Studies in the Department of Physics. And for this short video, I'm going to be your tour guide to the Department of Physics. We are extremely excited to see you on campus. Even given the challenges of COVID-19, we're prepared for the situation if that can't happen. One way or another, we're going to welcome you this fall, 2020, to SMU. Now, I can't tell you about the Department of Physics without telling you the interlocked story of the history, current state, and potential fates of the cosmos. So let's take a little tour of the universe, and in doing so, we'll take a tour of the SMU Department of Physics. Physics, quite simply, is the study of energy, matter, space, and time. Those are the things that, so far as we know, make up reality and thus what we perceive as the universe. Now, space allows us to define a sense of place, where things are and where they aren't. Without time, there would be no change in the universe. So time is that coordinate that allows us to map out our changing cosmos. Energy is that thing that bodies possess of that gives them the ability to move or by gaining or losing energy to change their state of motion. Whether we're talking about humans or whether we're talking about stars, the dead hulks of stars, black holes, or the tiniest building blocks of the universe that make them up, we're talking about energy and matter and the dance that they play out in space and time. Now, the SMU Department of Physics has excellence in both research and teaching, and these two things are intertwined in our program. You can't have one without the other. You can't be exposed to the newest ideas of the day in your classrooms if the professors that are at the front of your classroom are not engaged in those ideas at the frontier of science. So let's take a quick tour of the universe, and in doing so, I'll give you a quick glimpse of what different people within the Department of Physics are doing. And at all times, I want you to know Students like you are involved in this research at the cutting edge of human knowledge, and we are excited to have you join in the quest to understand everything past, present, and future. Now, the universe began at an event we call the Big Bang. And nobody understands what the Big Bang is, but that event set the universe as we know it in motion. It gave birth to space and time and energy and matter. Now, there are relics left over of the Big Bang today in the universe. One of those is light that's left over from about 400,000 years after the universe came into being. And that light has been streaming through the cosmos for almost 13.8 billion years. And as a result of it, it carries the fingerprints of what was going on in the universe very early on. Professor Joel Myers at SMU is engaged in the study of the light left over from the Big Bang, the so-called cosmic microwave background, trying to look at the fingerprints, the imprints of the players of the cosmos at that time to figure out who they were and what they were doing. Now, what are these players I'm talking about? Well, so far as we know, they are the building blocks of the universe, subatomic particles. Smaller than the core of the nucleus of every atom in the universe, these particles are the foundations of the existence of the cosmos. Their interplay weaves into what we call matter. And it is the forces that hold them together, of which we think there are four known forces that do this, that bind that matter together into reality. SMU is involved in the Large Hadron Collider, a one-of-a-kind world-leading instrument located in Europe. The Large Hadron Collider smashes particles, protons, at the heart of every hydrogen atom, together at such high energies that it effectively recreates a moment in time after the Big Bang, roughly a millionth to a billionth of a second after the universe came into existence. By smashing particles together at these incredible energies, we create little bangs, little microcosmoses of the beginning of time, and we can study them by taking images using large cameras, eight stories tall. The one that SMU is involved in is called Atlas. 
eight stories tall, half a football field in length, and capable of taking up to 40 million pictures a second. Four faculty at SMU are currently involved in the use of data from the Large Hadron Collider to try to understand the universe when it was very young, just a millionth of a second after it came into existence. Those faculty are Allison Dayana, Richard Stranowski, Jingbo Yi, and myself. Together, we form the SMU Atlas Group, and together with postdoctoral researchers, scientists, research faculty, uh, undergraduate students, and graduate students, we're studying these pictures of moments very close to the beginning of time to understand the building blocks of the universe. And SMU was very famously involved in the discovery, the most recently discovered building block of the cosmos, the Higgs particle. Discovered in 2012, it was predicted to exist in the 1960s, but it eluded detection for over 50 years. And once discovered, it helped us to understand why it is that anything in the universe has mass at all. Another key player in the subatomic universe, at the beginning of time and today, is an elusive particle called the neutrino. Predicted to exist in the 1930s, it wouldn't be detected until the 1950s. The sun is producing copious amounts of these ghostly particles. They pass through us, they pass through the Earth, almost without even noticing that we're here, and leaving almost no imprint of themselves behind. And yet, we humans have gotten very clever at detecting these elusive neutrinos. And so for the many decades since the neutrino was discovered, we've been studying more and more of its properties. Professor Tom Cohen is involved in an international collaboration to produce and study neutrinos, and doing so in precise laboratory conditions in order to fully map out the properties of these strange and elusive particles. The goal is to map out those properties enough so that we can understand if they played a big hand in why the universe turned out the way it did today. Even though they interact so feebly, they are nonetheless ghostly messengers from the beginning of time, and they have much to teach us about the history and structure of the universe. Now, taking data and studying the after effects of particle collisions are not the only way to understand the early cosmos. Fundamental theoretical physicists use that data along with foundational mathematical ideas about the structure of the cosmos in order to not only understand existing data, but to predict the outcome of experiments that have not yet been conducted. There are multiple theoretical physicists involved in our department who are working on these kinds of high-energy particle collisions and thinking about how they will teach us about the beginning of the universe. Those faculty are Pavel Nadalski, Fred Olness, and Roberto Vega. Now, Dr. Nadalski and Dr. Olness are particularly interested in the structure of the building block of the heart of every atom the proton and the neutron. Together, these are bound together tightly in the core of every atom in its nucleus. And it's still a mystery today as to exactly why protons and neutrons have the structure that we observe in nature. The origin of that structure is not clearly understood, even though the mathematical ideas that should lead to the answers were laid down decades ago. Mathematics is the language that humans use to describe nature. And so, as a student in the physics department, you'll be exposed to this great language of the cosmos and its use in making predictions or descriptions of the cosmos that can be tested using experiment, which is one of the core hallmarks of science as a pursuit of knowledge. Now, Dr. Roberto Vega is very interested in fundamental theories of nature. The best mathematical description we have of the physical universe is something called the Standard Model. The mathematics for that were laid down in the 60s, 70s, and early 80s. But ever since then, physicists have been in hot pursuit of a more comprehensive and complete understanding of nature. There have been no successful efforts yet, even given decades of work on the subject, but theoretical physicists do not give up easily. Faced with the loss of one good idea, there are always more to be discovered. That kind of fundamental discovery is what drives the work that Dr. Vega does. 
And so together, the work of Dr. Myers, Dr. Vega, Dr. Nadalski, and Dr. Olness represents our large theoretical physics effort at SMU. Now jumping forward almost 13.8 billion years to today from the beginning of time, we want to understand why the universe has the structure that we see tonight. Look out in the night sky on a clear evening and you'll see bright points of light in the sky. Now many of those are simply stars like our own sun that are our neighbors here in our galaxy, the Milky Way. But what leads to the structure of galaxies, which are large, structured clusters of billions, hundreds of billions, if not trillions of stars? One of the elements that seems to drive the evolution and structure of galaxies is a mysterious object that, so far as we know today, lies at the heart of every galaxy in the universe. And that is an object called a black hole. Now a black hole is usually the remnant left over from a dead, very heavy star, much heavier than our own sun. But sometimes black holes will cluster together and form much larger structures called supermassive black holes. And so far as we know, there's a supermassive black hole at the center of every galaxy, including the Milky Way. Now, one of our newest faculty members, Dr. Krista Smith, is engaged deeply in the study of supermassive black holes as the engines that drive galaxies and their evolution. Now it's not just stars and the dead hulks of stars that help to explain the structure of things as big as galaxies. There's also a mysterious form of matter that we have yet to identify, and that is what has been called dark matter. We do not know what makes up dark matter, but SMU is in pursuit of answers to that question. Professor Jody Cooley is leading a team of researchers at SMU, again, including students, PhD scientists, and faculty as well, in the pursuit of the study of dark matter. The experiment, SuperCDMS, is hoping to capture naturally occurring dark matter in the universe by waiting for it to strike very clean, very still detectors that are kept deep underground to shield them from the noise and radiation present on the surface of the Earth. Dark matter, so far as we know, makes up about 80% of the matter in the universe. Now, matter seems to play a really outsized role in my story so far. But don't be mistaken, matter itself, the substantive material, especially made of atoms or even dark matter, is not the dominant player, so far as we know, in the universe today. In fact, the main thing that's driving the structure of our entire universe is a mysterious thing we have yet to identify as well, called dark energy. Now we know much less about dark energy than we know even about dark matter. And so we have uh, an exciting effort at SMU that is aimed in part at helping to shed more light on dark energy. And that's a team of researchers led by Professor Robert Keogh. They're using astronomical data to study phenomena like time-varying stars or other time-varying phenomena in the cosmos. And by mapping those out with great precision over great distances, which correspond to looking further and further and further back in time in the universe, the goal here is to build up a more complete map of the overall structure of the grand cosmos in the hopes of then using that new data to understand more deeply about what it is that's driving the universe at its largest scales today. Now, in addition to all this research, we have excellent classroom experiences in store for you when you arrive at SMU. Whether teaching is being done in person or whether it's being done remotely in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, you're going to be exposed not only to the best ideas of the day coming straight from the frontier of science, but you'll be exposed to the long history of physics, the mathematics and rigor of physics as a way of understanding the universe in preparation for you perhaps getting involved in research or eventually teaching on your own. Many of our faculty practice the best known techniques in teaching physics. They come straight from physics education research that's been done for multiple decades now. Now, Dr. Simon Dowling, 
Dr. Dudana Balakashieva, and Dr. Randy Scalise are our excellent teaching lecturers whom you will definitely see at the introductory level in physics, if not at the more advanced level. They teach many of our courses and they will give you a full classroom, interactive, and homework experience at the college level, akin to the best institutions that you see across the United States and across the world. We're very excited to be able to welcome you here. Our staff and other members of the physics department stand ready to welcome you to our program and to get you to feel like you're part of the physics family at SMU. I'm very excited to see you, if not on campus this fall, definitely somewhere online at one of our social events that the department commonly holds, such as our welcome events or tea times or special lectures, seminars, and colloquia. Now, one of the key ways to get involved in the Department of Physics, in addition to being in our classes, joining us to work on research, or coming to one of our many educational or social events, is to be involved in the Society of Physics Students. Our SPS chapter at SMU is a national chapter of the organization, and if you become a member of the SPS, then you are eligible to become also a member of the National American Physical Society, the largest representative body of physicists in the United States. The SPS is a great place to meet other students, to engage in activities both educational and social, and eventually to ascend to leadership in the organization, which of course is an excellent place to train for future leadership in either academics or industry. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of the department, seen through the lens of the history, structure, and unknowns of the universe. There are many questions left to answer today. All the questions of the universe have not yet been addressed, and there's a ton of opportunity in store for you if you decide to join us to work on research in our department. I hope you're having a wonderful summer. I hope that you, your family, and friends are staying well, even in these difficult times. We're very excited to see you either on campus or virtually in the fall. We're prepared for anything. Physics is an exciting place to answer fundamental questions about the nature, structure, and origin and fate of the entire universe. I hope you'll join us on this quest to expand the boundaries of human knowledge while pushing the frontiers of technology at the same time and advancing new mathematical ideas. Welcome to SMU.